That kid, what a mess. What's this? Jumpin' Jehoshaphats! Honey, look what I found in Little Junior's backpack. Where did he get these from? That's just part of his school assignment, dear. They're teaching dredge to our children in schools? Dredge in our schools. How to protect your family and your true blue values. Cabal therapy in the classroom. Lion's eye diamond in the lunchroom. Bridge from below on the playground. Like it or not, dredge has become part of our children's curriculum. It's not even real magic. I think the DCI should ban it from the schools altogether. It's dirty. I hear it goes off on turn one. I can't believe I just said that. I don't care if she's in a meeting. You get that cockamamie principal on the phone this instant. I'm a parent and a taxpayer. Hello, sir. This is Principal Campbell. What seems to be the trouble? Now you listen to me, Principal. Your school is teaching my boy Dredge and I won't stand for it. In this household, we see our legacy in one color and one color only. Blue. True and true. Sir, whether you like it or not, your child is going to have to learn about Dredge sooner or later. Would you rather he learn about it on the streets or in a safe, controlled classroom taught by a professional? Now you listen here, Principal Cabal. It's Campbell. I'm not opposed to him hearing about decks other than Delva and Miracles. Heck, we all experimented with Mono Red in college, am I right? Mmm, no. But I won't have you luring my boy into some girlfriend bracket with your promises of mannerless dredge. He'll just be up to his ears in debt and sitting alone with the bye. First of all, we don't teach mannerless dredge here. We teach clean, effective dredge, which other than a few key pieces is actually a reasonably priced deck for Legacy. And second, the girlfriend bracket? Am I talking to someone from the 40s? The girlfriend bracket is not a grouping at the bottom anymore. It's for fighters, for players who want to break away from the expectations and assumptions of others and demonstrate what they can do. I... Your son should be proud if he finds himself in the girlfriend bracket. Maybe if you are willing to embrace new ideas and new decks, you could join him too. I... You're right. I'm ready to abandon my preconceived notions about Dredge and learn the deck. Are you? Legacy Dredge thrives off the Dredge mechanic from the original Ravnica block. The goal of the deck is to get a card with dredge into your graveyard as soon as possible so that you can begin replacing your normal draws with dredges. Eventually, you fuel your graveyard to the point where it is an extension of your hand. Since you are casting the majority of your spells from the graveyard, dredge 6 might as well say draw 6. Dredge wins by attacking with creatures that enter the battlefield directly from the graveyard, which can come back from the graveyard after being killed and eventually overwhelm the opponent. The key cards in dredge are the dredge cards themselves. You will want to pack at least 12 12 dredge enablers, preferably a playset of Golgari Grave Troll, Stinkweed Imp, and Golgari Thug. Some people include a single copy of Dark Blast as an answer to death and taxes and elves, but the Grave Trolls, Imps, and Thugs are all auto-includes. Cards like Putrid Imp, Careful Study, Breakthrough, and Faithless Looting enable us to place a dredger in the graveyard early at a very low cost. A good opening hand should include one or more of these and at least one land and a dredger. Cabal Therapy can also be used to put a dredge card in the graveyard by targeting yourself and naming the dredge card you want to discard. But this is only something you should do if no other spells are available, or if the game is running long and all of your dredge spells are sitting in your hand. If you're casting Cabal Therapy on turn 1 against an unknown opponent, it is best to name Force of Will so you can make sure that your enablers don't get countered. It can also be used to strip your opponent of sideboard cards such as Rest in Peace, Surgical Extraction, Graph Digger's Cage, and other things your opponents may have sideboarded in. Lion's Eye Diamond is what makes Dredge explosive. Your ideal hand contains Lion's Eye Diamond, a land, Faithless Looting, and a Dredger. Play your land first, then Lion's Eye Diamond. Cast Faithless Looting, hold priority in response, and then crack Lion's Eye Diamond for three red mana. This will put your entire hand into your graveyard, including the Dredgers, so you can start dredging immediately off of your draws from Faithless Looting. You can then use the three red mana that you from cracking the Lion's Eye Diamond to flashback Faithless Looting and dredge two more times, ultimately dredging four times and essentially going off. 
Lion's Eye Diamond can also give you an explosive start with other enablers, such as Careful Study, but it's not as elegant, and there's a risk that you won't find Faithless Looning, and your three red mana will go to waste. While you are dredging, you have a chance to hit Narcomoeba. When Narcomoeba is put into your graveyard from your library, you may put it into play. You can then sacrifice it to flashback Cabal Therapy, or Dread Return, or as simply a creature with Evasion. Your primary beat stick is Icarid. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Icarid is in your graveyard, you may exile another black creature in your graveyard to return Icarid to the battlefield with haste. This means Icarid can't be countered, and while it needs to be sacrificed at the end of your turn, your constant dredging should ensure that Icarid has enough food to keep coming back. The only way your opponent can truly deal with Icarid is to exile it. When you sacrifice Icarid at the end of your turn, if you have Bridge from Below in your graveyard, you will trigger Bridge from Below. There are a lot of triggers to remember with this deck, so if you are new to dredge, I I highly recommend getting more familiar with it on Magic Online. Bridge from Below states that whenever a non-token creature you control is put into the graveyard from play, you get a 2-2 zombie. If you have multiple copies of Bridge in the graveyard, this effect will trigger multiple times and create multiple zombies. This is particularly useful when sacrificing a creature to pay the flashback cost of a spell. Sacrificing an Icarid to Cabal Therapy leaves you with zombie tokens, which you can then use to cast flashback another Cabal Therapy or flashback Dread Return. The second paragraph on Bridge Bridge from Below states that if a creature your opponent controls goes to the graveyard, exile Bridge from Below. Be careful when attacking into your opponent's board if they have creatures that would die after blocking. If your attacking creature would also die after damage is dealt, you can play around this by stacking the triggers so that you get zombie tokens before all of your copies of Bridge from Below get exiled. The other way that Dredge can win is by reanimating a huge creature like Ashen Rider, Iona, or Elish Norn with Dread Return as early as turn 1. This card typically comes out of the sideboard against decks like Burn, Elves, Sneak and Show, and Storm, where these creatures act as a silver bullet of sorts. Dredge also runs some amount of Firestorm in the sideboard, typically between 3 and 4 copies. You want to bring Firestorm in against decks with Deathrite Shaman, which can be a real problem for Dredge, and decks like Death and Taxes and Elves. Firestorm can also be brought in if you're concerned about counter magic. Because discarding cards is part of Firestorm's cost, it doesn't matter if it gets countered. My sideboard is a bit unorthodox because I don't run any answers to graveyard hate. Some people prefer to use cards like Nature's Claim, Abrupt Decay, or Chain of Vapor, but I don't because I feel that a lot of things have to fall into place for those cards to work and to be useful, and bringing them in ultimately weakens the dredge engine as a whole. This style of dredge is known as Fearless Dredge. Other popular sideboard cards include Leyline of the Void against Reanimator decks, Ashen Ghoul or Nether Shadow, which can act as additional copies of Icarid, or additional discard spells like Unmask. There's plenty of room for innovation when it comes to building your sideboard for dredge. Dredge often requires you to mulligan aggressively in order to ensure that you have a dredger, an enabler, and land in hand to start dredging as soon as possible. Don't be afraid to go down to six cards or even five if your hand doesn't have what it takes. Dredge is also very susceptible to variance. There are times where you will dredge several times and never see an Icarid or an Archimeba. Dredge does not operate like Brainstorm, where you can stack your draws. The outcome of dredge is entirely random. Dredge is also very susceptible to sideboard hate, like Rest in Peace. These are things that you will need to be comfortable with if you want to become a skilled dredge player. Finally, dredge is considered to be a reviled deck choice by many. People will often tell you to your face that your deck is terrible, that you are terrible for playing it, and so it is an unfortunate reality that dredge players need to have thick skin. Most of us wear our love for dredge as a badge of honor, though. If you've enjoyed this deck tech, you can find more of my work on the Girlfriend Bracket podcast at gatheringmagic.com or as part of the Magic Mike's podcast at twitch.tv slash magicmikes. Thanks for tuning in.